Welcome to Electro Online. Here's a really good example the electrolysis of water to help understand the various thermodynamic potentials the change in internal energy, enthalpy, Gibbs free energy, and Helmholtz free energy. Now, we're not going to talk too much in detail about the Gibbs free energy and the Helmholtz free energy. We're going to use this example to get a better understanding of the internal energy and the work done by the system and by the what we call enthalpy, but at least we want to begin to introduce the other two thermodynamic potentials as well and hang them, have them all relate to one another. So we have a pretty good start of what it all means and then we can start talking about the various definitions of these. So in the electrolysis of water, we attach a battery to a couple of electrodes, one called the cathode, the other called the anode. The cathode is positively charged and the anode is negatively charged. The anode introduces electrons into the solution, the cathode absorbs electrons from the solution. What happens is, at the anode, hydrogen gas is produced, and at the cathode, oxygen gas is produced. So essentially, we take water, separate the oxygen from the hydrogen, and produce hydrogen and oxygen bubbles. Those then have to do work because they expand against the atmosphere, so work is done. So we can see that P delta V in the process is a positive quantity. 3.7 kilojoules per mole of water that's being changed from water into hydrogen and oxygen gas. And so what, we, what happens is when the gas is produced, we push against the atmosphere, we're doing work. The system is doing the work, it's done by the system, so we have a positive P delta V quantity. In the process also, heat is introduced and the term that we use for introduction of heat into the system is T delta S. T stands for temperature, S stands for entropy. Now we haven't fully explained what entropy is, so we'll just leave it as that. It's simply T times delta S is, is, uh, is uh, heat introduced into the system, which results in a change in the entropy of the system. Again, it's related to the thermodynamic uh, the thermodynamic potentials, but we're not going to get into detail. That comes in the videos after this. Notice we're already familiar with delta U and delta H. Delta H is the enthalpy change. Delta U is the change in the internal energy. Now let's go to our equations here. The change in enthalpy, delta H, is defined as delta U plus P delta V. Delta U is the change in the internal energy. The internal energy is changed by adding heat and by adding electrical energy. So electrical energy input is 237.13 kilojoules and the heat added is 48.7 kilojoules. Together, that's heat introduced. That is called the enthalpy. So the enthalpy will be the sum of those two. Delta H will be 48.7 plus 237.13. So maybe in a way to say that is you can see that enthalpy can be defined as the total heat input in the system, or I should say the change in enthalpy is the total input of heat. If we add 237 plus 48, that would be 285 plus 0.83, and that's uh, what we should have right here. That's what we got here. So another way to write that is that delta H is equal to delta G plus T times delta S. So there's another way of looking at the enthalpy. It is the Gibbs free energy added to the term T delta S. And again, we don't know yet what that means. Patience will explain what that means in the next several videos. But what we do know is we know this equation already where it's simply the change in internal energy plus P delta V. So you add, you add all that heat together, that's delta H, and then you subtract from that, you subtract from that, the P delta V, so you can see that the change in total energy is the heat added minus the work done by the system to expand the hydrogen and oxygen gas. Next we want to look at the change in the Gibbs free energy, delta G. G is the unit or the, the variable we use to indicate Gibbs free energy. That makes sense, G and Gibbs, hmm, that's good. And is defined by the change in enthalpy minus the T delta S term. Remember. Delta S has to do with the change in entropy. We'll explain that later. So we take delta H, which is right here, and subtract from that the T delta S, which is the heat added, and that gives us what we call the Gibbs free energy, which is essentially, in this example, the electrical energy input to the system. So it's the electrical energy input 
not included the heat added to the system. So we can see that the Gibbs free energy is the total delta H, 285.83 kilojoules, minus the heat added to the system, gives us the Gibbs free energy. So at least that gives us something to look at to understand how that all fits in. And finally, we have what we call the Helmholtz free energy, which we use the letter F for that. I've also seen the letter A, so it depends where you look. But my textbook, my old textbook, uses F, so delta F is equal to delta U minus T delta S. So the internal energy minus this T delta S term again. Again, we don't know yet what it means, but if we take the internal energy, 282.13, and we take away the heat added to the system, we end up with what we call the Helmholtz free energy. So in a very nice process that we've probably seen before in our chemistry class, we can see that through this process, we can relate all the various aspects, the work done by the system, the term defined by the change in entropy. We can see the electrical energy input, which is considered the, the, the Gibbs free energy, the change in enthalpy, delta H, which is a total energy added to the system. We can see the delta U, the change in internal energy, and then the Helmholtz free energy, and all that linked together, we have a very good picture from where to start when we start trying to understand the next two concepts, or actually the next three concepts, the Gibbs free energy, the Helmholtz free energy, and that T delta S term, the temperature times the change in entropy, which seems to link everything together. So now that we're ready with a nice picture here, we're going to go next to our T delta S term to understand what that actually means. So stay tuned, and we'll continue on the voyage to understand the thermodynamic potentials. That's how it's done.